Madam Speaker, it's a privilege to rise today to speak briefly on my, about my colleague Steve Doscott. I actually knew about Steve before I'd met him when I worked with his son Adam. And then I had a little bit to do with him during the 2012 campaign here in the ACT. But I do recall during door knocking in Corwell one late afternoon, early evening, and I knocked on a particular door. A very lovely lady opened the door. She was very friendly. She was obviously a Liberal voter. And she said, come on in. And I did. It was Maureen. <laughs> so I'd managed to door knock the house of another um, Liberal candidate. Admittedly, Steve, the house was empty and they were in the move to their new house and their new electorate. So not only did I door knock a fellow candidate, it was someone who was no longer registered in that electorate. <laughs> and of course, it was unlikely to vote one for me anyway, because they would have put themselves as number one. So anyway, it was a nice kind of interlude, but a waste of my time as a door knocker. <laughs> but it did show that selfless move to a different electorate that Steve undertook, which enabled the Liberals to win three seats in Brindabella in that election as part of that swap with Zed Seselja, who moved from Malonglo to Brindabella. So Steve, as we've heard, is one, I think, the only person who represented three different electorates in his time in the Assembly, of Brindabella, um, Malonglo and Currajong. And it's something that probably will not be repeated. Early on when I first joined the Assembly, I recall Steve's campaign about Green Square, the re-greening of Green Square. It was one of the first sort of concerted campaigns that I saw an MLA undertake, and it provided me with a lot of valuable lessons that these um, quite local community issues can energise and activate so many people and produce a good result for the community. A couple of others that, in the long list of achievements that Steve's been able to do, despite being in opposition, that really resonated with me included, um, it was in fact I think before my time here, the Shepherd Centre, having worked previously in the deafness centre, sector, I understood how important that lobbying and advocacy was and was very grateful for Steve's work in that area. The other one uh, was the Boy in the Cage incident and the subsequent Shadow Review. I know many people, many who, families who go to that particular school and it was a really important issue and I would like to thank Steve for his efforts in that particular area. I've always found Steve to be an absolute gentleman. Many people, I think, in this chamber have, have mistaken his passion for the issues and seen him perhaps as aggressive at times, but I think it very much demonstrates how deeply he feels about these issues and how willing he is to represent his constituents in the strongest possible way, and that's a real plus and something that we can all take from his approach. I've especially appreciated his passion for education, sport and disability, and of course, those fabulous fundraising trivia nights which have raised so much money for important organisations in our community. When I first started in the Assembly, Steve invited me along to a whole lot of events with him. He was very inclusive and supportive and friendly. We got to the point at one stage where there were so many photos of us together that we started to joke that our respective spouses might start to get a bit jealous and think something <laughs> was going on. So whilst we still kept going to a few events, we took less photos. <laughs> I've always found Steve to be generous, inclusive, supportive, compassionate and dignified. Steve, Maureen and your families, go well. Go well, Steve, and thank you for your service. Mr Wall. Thank you, uh, 